Hey guys, normally I try to jump right into my videos because I've got 10 minutes to jam pack all the content that I want in there. Um, but today's video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, life for me and for a lot of people worldwide and everybody in France is very different right now. And so this video is just going to follow in that direction. It probably won't surprise any of you guys to know that I film my videos about a week or two usually in advance. So this was not the planned video that I had to come out today. And maybe I'll put that one out this weekend because I know there's a lot of you in quarantine and you might have some extra time to binge watch. Um, but otherwise it felt a little bit weird to go ahead as business as usual when there's such this big pandemic going around and our lives are so different right now. So I decided to film this video. Today's Wednesday, March 18th. So it's day two in quarantine and I'm gonna put it out tomorrow, so Thursday, March 19th. While there's a lot of true information out there circulating about the coronavirus, you know, washing your hands is very important, practicing social distancing, stay the F away from anyone out there, especially those who are vulnerable and especially those that are who are elderly. Um, but there's, as always, hashtag fake news, a lot of things circulating out there that aren't quite true. And I've had a lot of Americans reach out, which has been so nice to ask how things are going in Europe up, um, how I'm doing specifically, how our family's doing, which has been really kind to get everyone's messages. So I thought today's video I would talk to you a bit about how things went down in France in the last two months when the cases have gone from 12 to 7,000, um, how people reacted here, my point of view on the situation, the things that I didn't understand so much, and kind of how the atmosphere is today as we've just started quarantine. I'm hoping that for some of the Americans out there that aren't quite yet in the same situation that, that we are, that this can help you anticipate things a bit and also give you some insights about things that are going on in Europe. And for any of you French or anyone else that's watching the video and that's in quarantine or that has had you know impacts in their life, please don't hesitate to leave in the comments below how you're doing and how things are going. I'm sure I will be more available than normal to respond to everybody and looking forward to kind of exchanging. And finally, before we start, guys, there's lots of elderlies and lots of sick people out there that currently need help with their groceries and they really can't leave their house. So don't hesitate to knock on your neighbor's door to offer to help, of course, to stay far away from them, but you can still drop things off if they need it, communicate by SMS or text. Anything you can do to help somebody in need is so appreciated, so don't forget them. So just to kind of give you the timeline of how things went down. So I went to the U.S. in February to introduce, it was the very beginning of February, the 5th of February to the 19th, to introduce Eleanor to my family, my husband Robin came with, and we spent a two-week trip in the Midwest. And I remember when we left France, we arrived at the airport and we had got some emails ahead of time from United, the carrier that we were flying with. And we, when we got there, they had asked us at least three different times during check-in if we had ever visited in the last 14 days any part of mainland China because um, the president had just put in travel restrictions for any non-citizens that were coming to the US who had just come, who had just visited China. And I remember saying to my husband, wow, things must really be starting to spread because at this point, coronavirus was absolutely a topic. Wuhan had been in lockdown at this point for I think the last, you know, since the 23rd of January, it had been a couple of weeks. And so it was of course everywhere on the news, but no one had died from it yet in Europe. And it seemed like most of the cases that we were hearing about on the news were Asian travelers who were visiting Europe for vacation and who were bringing the virus with them. And so the general population wasn't really projecting yet, at least it didn't seem that way to me that there was a real crisis to come. But then we got back from the US after two weeks and you could see that things were already starting to change. There was the Princess Diamond cruise ship that was quarantined in Japan with a lot of cases. You saw the numbers just skyrocketing in China and you even had the first death from coronavirus here in Europe, which actually happened to be in France. So while the first death had just happened in France, there were only 12 cases at this time, at least that they knew of. And so I still didn't feel when I got back like the general population was taking this outbreak as seriously as we'll come to take it at some point. It still seemed like it wasn't going to touch so close to home for a lot of people. Um, this was around the time that Italy started to see quite an outbreak in the north. And so we were starting to hear things like if you had just been traveling from Italy, it would be 
ideal, you know, we strongly suggest that you self quarantine yourself for 14 days. You shouldn't be coming into the office. I know we had travel restrictions um, at work at this point, going to Italy and parts of Asia. But at the same time, it was Paris Fashion Week. So you had a lot, a lot of Italians coming in from Milan, which was also part of the regions that had been infected in Italy. A lot of travelers, not just Italian, but just generally coming in um, for Paris Fashion Week. And so there was still this idea that yes, it's getting worse, but I mean, we're letting people in, we're especially letting people in from the borders, you know, from Italy where it's where it's really bad right now, and we're not closing borders. And so you still had this idea that, yeah, it's bad, but it can't be that bad, right? But within the next month, things just started accelerating and you know, you saw Iran became an epicenter. This is when Italy started to get really bad. They started locking down areas, you know, full regions in Italy. Even in France, we started seeing these pockets within France where some cases would flare up and we would have to really lock down that city or that region. And this was just, I think the moment where it started to seem real to more people, especially when travel restrictions for Europeans started being put in place. I remember the day after President Trump announced that um, Europeans would no longer be able to come into Europe or into the US for the next 30 days. I think this is when it started to, you know, seem closer to home because it didn't just include Italians or it didn't just include Asia, it started to include everybody. And you started to realize like the virus is here and it's only rapidly going to multiply just like it has done everywhere else. So let's say we're about one week ago. Everybody in France started to understand that there is a virus, it is going to touch home, there are going to be issues in France, we're going to need to control it, people are going to get sick, and there will be deaths. However, I still think when I was watching the news, for example, there was still a lot of debates going on because at this point, Italy was, I mean, a week ago, Italy was already starting to go into lockdown and they were seeing just an immense amount of, of cases, of deaths, of strain on their healthcare system, not enough beds in the hospital, not enough machines to help people breathe. And the French, I felt like on the news, I heard a lot about, well, the healthcare system in Italy isn't the same as it is in France, and it's not as well organized, and it's not as well equipped as we are here, and it's a very aging population, and that's why they're seeing such a high death rate, which isn't maybe false, but it just, again, made it almost seem, I felt like, to some of the French population that this still wasn't as major of a risk as we're seeing right now in Italy. However, then Macron announced a week ago that all daycares up until universities would be closed indefinitely. This is when I felt like the popu like the majority of the population was really like, wow, you know, shit kind of started to hit the fan. How are working parents supposed to go and work if their kids are at home? How are we supposed to educate the next generation if we're all at home? How does society function like this? And then on top of that, this is what had just happened to Italy and was now really happening to Spain too. So France, like you are officially in the same boat. It was the big to me wake up call when Macron made that announcement. However, at this time, that was the only big measure that they announced. On Friday, they did announce that there would no longer be permitted any gatherings of more than 100 people. Um, but they weren't closing restaurants or bars at this point, so people were still going out. Then on Saturday, they announced that starting from Saturday at midnight, all bars and restaurants would be closed to the public. So that was a new measure that they put in place. However, they did say Sunday, you can still go and vote. There'll be extreme security and like safety measures, um, but everybody is still supposed to leave their house and go out and vote. So at this point, people also left their house and went and sat in parks because it was a nice day and because we were being told, be careful with distance to one another, but we weren't told besides gatherings of more than 100 people that you couldn't really go outside, so people were. And then Monday, Macron got on the television and said that we would have to be put into quarantine for the next 14 days and he definitely spent a bit of time at the beginning of his speech talking about how people hadn't respected the measures that he had put in place and there were too many crowds outside and in the parks and people weren't respecting the one meter distance from one another. 
So as of today, it's day two of quarantine in France. We are not allowed to leave our house unless you absolutely have to work and then you have um, a little statement that you can print off. Or if you're helping an elderly, doing an essential like grocery trip, uh, going to the doctors, if you can't do it by video, and uh, you can go out and exercise as long as you're by yourself, you respect the one meter distance, and you take your little, your statement that you sign and that says what you're doing with you in case the police stop you. Okay, so now that I've done the timeline for you guys and I've told you a little bit how things have gone down, it's really actually crazy even to like recap everything for myself because it feels like it's been, I don't know, months rather than just six weeks since we went to the U.S. It almost feels like time has kind of stopped in some ways, but also just like taken on new proportions and in other ways, it's very bizarre. Um, but let me talk to you a bit about how I felt during this situation. Okay, so the first thing for me was not enough clear rules. I've talked about this in my cultural videos about France before. Part of the thing that amazes me and also mystifies me about France is the fact that they interpret rules and they're not a society that generally, in normal times, you say a rule and they just follow it. They tend to analyze it and debate it and interpret it and decide what part of the rule they're gonna follow. And it's just part of, I think, being French. And so for me, it's very important in a time of crisis like this, when you're expecting your, um, you know, your citizens and your population um, to follow what you want to put in place, that you send very clear messages. I felt like the message now about what we're supposed to do in quarantine is clear. <laughs> I know what I'm supposed to do. I didn't find the lead up in the last weeks to be very clear. My second point is mixed messages. It goes kind of with not being clear. There were so many mixed messages going on. It was hard for people, including myself, to understand that I need to practice social distancing. I need to stay a meter away from people. I shouldn't be seeing any of my family outside of the people that live with me. I shouldn't be visiting any of the grandparents that are here in France. However, I should go and vote. Um, I'm aware they put in security measures. I'm aware that they made it to be as safe as possible, but you can see by the turnout in France that a lot of people didn't go and vote. It was a lot of these mixed messages. And finally, I think it created a lot, a lot of anxiety. I'm not an anxious person in my day-to-day -day life, and I felt very anxious the Thursday when Macron was going to speak, the Saturday when they closed everything, um, the Sunday when everybody knew Macron was gonna speak, but we weren't sure what he was gonna say. The amount of WhatsApp messages, the fake messages coming from the head of this hospital, from somebody very close in the government here, there will be 45 days of quarantine, there will be this. I think it created so much anxiety that people were going to the stores, that they were buying everything in their mother, you know, there was no pasta left, there was no rice left, there there was no toilet paper, no non-perishables because the messages before had seemed to a lot of people so unclear and so mixed that this lack, not feeling like you knew what was going to happen created a lot of anxiety. And then, So how is it now in France? So as I said, it's day two of quarantine. The first thing I would say is that the rules now are very clear, the message is very clear, and everybody has understood that it's really important that we stay inside that we self-isolate and that we try to let the virus die out by not having people that we can give it to. I think people understand now that France's healthcare system can be overrun if we don't do something to slow down the spread of the virus in the same way as all of those other countries. I don't really hear as much of that criticism that I felt like I had heard at the beginning about Italy. I think we're all aware that France might not have enough masks, that we might not have enough antibacterial gel, that we might not have enough hospital beds, that we might not have enough machines to help people breathe, and that we really, really need to follow all of these measures because we're, we're at risk too. And I think the mood is pretty somber here, um, obviously because, you know, we're talking about if you spread this, you know, you could accidentally kill somebody, and we're talking about the projections of what could happen if we don't slow the virus down are really sad. And then people aren't used to being inside. Of course, this is what we have to do, and so people are trying to give each other tips to stay motivated and stay productive working from home and keep your spirits up. But, you know, it's some people are by themselves. Isolation is really hard. Humans are meant to be together. We're usually, we're a species that likes to be in gatherings that we 
can't do. So even if we all know it's for the better good and people are staying indoors and listening, it does bring just kind of a different somber mood, I would say. All right, guys, this is kind of how it is in France now from my point of view. We're just in day two of the quarantine, so I'll keep you updated if you want to know more. Um, I'm pretty active on Instagram right now since I have a little bit more time. Um, so don't hesitate to follow me if you want to know what's going on. I hope everyone out there is staying safe, washing your hands, being careful, listening to all of the rules and measures that your governments are putting in place. It's definitely a time for everyone to stay united as a population and support all of the healthcare work that are doing their best to make the situation as good as they can. Good luck in isolation. I will be probably extra on top of responding to comments as well, so don't hesitate to leave one below, and I will talk to everybody soon. Lots of bisous.